the Riley and Kimmy show at Megacon Tampa Bay. This will be a, well, sort of like a flashback moment, even though it's not a Friday flashback. It'll be a late Sunday night, Monday kind of flashback. And we are in Artist Alley, Professional Alley, because you're a writer, artist, Right. You're you're kind of a weird combination though because you also sketch. I right. sketch, yeah, but I don't do sequential art. Like I don't draw my own books. Okay. But, but you're, I. But you're I a big writer. Yeah, I'm a writer. She's a big writer. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When you know, pink. You know, Power Rangers. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. For, uh-huh. Here we go. You match. Yeah. Yeah. Award just because of this. Come on. That's awesome. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm the writer on Power Rangers Pink. Yep. Which just wrapped up a few months ago. Are the skeptics from Black Mask? I write Rick and Morty Pocket like you stole it. Uh, and my next two big projects are I'm writing Hack Slash from Image, the classic Hack Slash. Uh, Tim Seeley's turned over the reins to me, which I love. Okay. And uh, and then my next uh, big book is Assassinistas, which comes out in December wow. and has art by Eisner Hall of Famer and Love and Rockets artist Gilbert Hernandez, Ooh. which is a dream to work with him. So. Ooh. Now, you're writing a lot. I mean, yeah. it seems like you're on quite a few books and and blog and et cetera and whatever. How? Are you a person that says, okay, I'm going to write five hours a day, four hours a day, or do you just write as it flows, do you feel? Cause can I you, cuss? So, you, you can. Okay. Go ahead. There's a quote that's attributed to Allen Ginsberg that I like a lot. It's when the muse comes to your bedside, don't tell her you'll fuck her later. Whoa, okay. okay. That's why I asked if I could cuss, well, right? Um, which basically means when the muse tickles your fancy, you drop what you're doing and you give her what she wants. Gotcha. I'm lucky enough in that I work from home and writing is my full-time job. So I try to, I mean, my stories are always in my head. I'm always, always thinking about my work. And I do try to work, you know, I have deadlines and I, and I, and I adhere to them, but uh, I just write a lot. Like last weekend, I decided to take the weekend off from work. And so I wrote a six page short story. Like I just, I just love writing. Even when it sucks, I love it. <laughs> do you, re- like, let's say Rick and Morty is an example. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you write a story and then change it, just totally throw it away and say that, 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 that just didn't fit dialogue and stuff and, and just change? I mean, it, it, that ends up in a trash can. We get something else? Much? or Sometimes. Not a lot. I honestly, I spend so much time thinking about and internally edi- editing my work before I even sit down to start writing. So I don't, um, I don't often write things and then chunk them completely. But I do occasionally. Uh, like one of the pocket like you stole it issues. I wanted to, I wrote like three pages of Mr. Poopy Butthole for like no reason. And my editor was like, why is this in here? And I was like, this is my own entertainment. And so it, it went away, uh, which was the right and good choice for it. My editor was totally in the right there. Um, but yeah, every once in a while, just to get the the, um, the juices flowing, I'll write something that I don't intend to actually use. But uh, by and large, everything that I write for a story gets used even if it doesn't get used in the final text, sometimes okay. it's just I, it, it, I just sometimes I just needed to write it because I needed to know what was going to happen. You know, the first draft is you telling yourself the story, and so yeah, sometimes I I write things that don't get used, like obviously, like they don't end up in the script. But it's like I I needed to write that scene because I needed to know what was going to happen, even if it goes in the trash. This might sound crazy here, but I'm being serious. Do you hear the voices? Do you see them kind of, they come alive in, and you're like watching a movie kind of thing, interactive kind of thing um, going on? Comics are my favorite thing to read and my favorite way to consume media. So okay. I don't really see them in movies. Yeah. I see them in comics. Okay. Um, but I, t- I absolutely, I hear them. Like they're, they're, they're very, what they say and do is very clear to me. I have a really hard time like, when people ask, like, who would play so-and-so? Like, I have a really hard time casting that because it's like them. They would play themselves. They exist in my head, fully formed. But sometimes I'm like, uh. Like, Assassinista is the main character, Octavia. She kind of came up, like, her, her way I explain her to people is I'm like, she's like if Pam Greer played Deathstroke. You know, like, she's like, that. that's who she is to me. Um, but at the same time, she's someone totally different now. That's kind of how I started to conceive of her. And now she's someone totally different, and I don't know who could play her because she's fully, fully real in my head, and I don't, I don't, gotcha. I don't know how, to, I don't know who else, anybody else to capture her wouldn't become her; they would just play her. She's already real somewhere in the ether, you know. I didn't know if you're like the Mozart, you heard the thing ahead of time, and so, you know, before you actually. Oh yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I, I, I was talking about that in my last panel. I do what I call crockpotting, which is like I spend three weeks thinking about it, something before I sit down. It's how I'm not intimidated by blank pages. It's because I already know what I want to put down by the time I sit down. I drive around in my car and talk to myself. That's how I come up with ideas. Actually, I saw a teeny 
well, heard her Friday talking, well, you're carrying, I think, a conversation with yourself, kind of, and right here, and because we were interviewing Kyle next door, and I was like, wow, I think she's doing dialogue or the story or something. You were, yeah, I was like, she's not talking on the cell phone. I was like, wow. That's that's the thing I do, yeah. I like doing it in my car a lot because I think people think I'm on like a Bluetooth when I'm actually just like having really intense character conversations, like, yeah, no, I, I openly, I openly talk to myself. It's kind of, that's pretty embarrassing that you actually caught me doing it. <laughs> That's why we opened the video that way. I was like, wow, she's talking to herself. Yeah. It was kind of fun. No, I feel like talking to myself. You, you can see Teeny at the Melbourne Toy and Comic Con coming up on October 22nd, a Sunday. She will be there all day. And will you sketch, just out of curiosity, will you sketch too? I'll be sketching Rick and Morty stuff. That's like that's what I sketch. I don't, I don't try to disappoint people with anything else. I just okay. do Rick and Morty sketches. But I'll be doing Rick and Morty sketches. I think they're doing sketch cards for that show. Uh, if you say so. Uh, and I'll be selling The Skeptics, Power Rangers Pink, Magdalena, Rick and Morty, and that's a few days before my birthday, so, you know, come oh. see me, say hi. Well, happy early birthday, and stop by, wish her a happy early birthday. Follow her on Facebook, because you are social media happy, and I think Twitter, too, right? Yeah, I have an author page on Facebook, and, and I have a Twitter, just Teeny Howard, T-I-N-I Howard, like the duck, all one word. Okay, I'll, I'll put it right there, There's, yeah. it's magic, like right, there. right there, I'll put it right there. Okay, it's magical, see? Yeah. I'm, like, going to pretend to yeah. make it appear. Well, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Teeny, thank you for being with thank us. You. We look forward to seeing you at the Melbourne Toy and Comic-Con. Thank you for being there. Riley and Kimmy show.